Previously, I built this two-stage model rocket from cardboard tubes, 3D printed components and plywood. Initially, I tested stage two independently. After a failed attempt at getting it off the pad, oh, the flight went almost perfectly. You probably saw all of that in the last video, but if you'll recall, we had some typically bad weather which meant that I couldn't launch the rocket even when it was completely finished and raring to go. Someone in the comments said I should move country and it has crossed my mind, I'll say that. Since then, I waited for a window of opportunity with low winds, a high cloud base and an above zero temperature before going for launch. About a week ago on a chilly winter's morning, my friend Mike and I headed up to the launch field armed with the rocket and a bunch of gear to see how it would all go. Pretty true. This is a standard uh, motorway freeway. Yeah. We set everything up while trying to stay warm. The temperature was about three degrees C. You know if you complain about the weather you're gonna get more complaints from Canadians. Canadians and <laughs> Finnish people yeah. jumping in. That's the actual engine in there. I had a good idea of how high and fast the rocket would travel during its flight, thanks to Rocksim, a software I'd used for running simulations. If the rocket didn't explode on the pad, it was predicted to reach speeds in excess of 250 miles an hour and fly to an altitude of around 2,000 feet. I engaged the GPS and activated the onboard camera, making sure not to mess up the step-by-step -step procedure by forgetting something flight critical. Okay, this might be a problem. If the second stage doesn't fire, it might be because we've forgot. well, I've forgotten the uh... <laughs> the plugs to stick into the ends of the, the motors to hold the igniters in. So I'm just going to use some duct tape. This will be used in the investigation afterwards when it doesn't work. <laughs> stage two was placed on top of stage one and the guide rail raised into position. I got my Mavic into the air, made sure all of the cameras were rolling and then went for a countdown. Would everything go to plan? Would the powerful first stage rip the rocket apart? Which of the many components would fail first? There was only one way to find out. I'll just go from five. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, stage one worked, but what about stage two? Oh. Where'd that go? Second stage? Yeah, I can see it. Oh, can you see the second stage? Yeah, yeah. I can see it now, yeah. Mission success. The main unknown of this mission, the remotely controlled staging, worked flawlessly. Now for both parachute deployments. Wait, oh, it's, it's deployed, it's deployed. The first stage is falling. Yeah, and the first stage is falling, the second stage is right above it. Oh, the, the oh yes, we've got deploy uh, successful deployment of the parachute on stage one, and stage two looks like that's also deployed, although slightly more um, on the... Uh, Tumbling side. The main handheld camera unfortunately had no chance of picking up the second stage against the grey sky as it fell. It's really hard to make out. On yeah, that I can't see it at all. So we set off to track down the two separated stages, aided by my Mavic Mini, which acted as a sort of rapid response scout vehicle. That worked spectacularly. Very pleased. Super loud. Sent the drone over. It has found the first, uh, the first stage, but the second stage went way further. Stage one landed just a couple of fields away, while stage two landed in unknown territory, worryingly just out of sight. To retrieve the flight data and onboard footage, we definitely needed to recover this. Oh, I think I can see the second stage. Can you oh see my that? god, oh, that's so far away. So it's like lucky. perfectly in line. It's gone so far. We've walked like eight miles. Suddenly, a vehicle was seen to be intercepting the rocket. We hoped that they wouldn't mind the accidental intrusion into their airspace and would let us enter the landing site. I made sure to only fly my drone over the fields we had permission to fly in and then nice. decided to land it, just to be on the safe side. After retrieving the drone, I waved down the buggy driver to try and negotiate the safe return of the rocket. This guy's living the life. Hello, our rocket's gone into your field. Is it okay if we come over and get it? Yeah, is that okay? It's just over there. We just want to come and grab you. Yeah, oh, have you seen it? Yeah, the orange thing. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. As it turned out, the owner of the buggy was surprisingly a little smaller than expected, but diplomacy was still achieved. Damn, that kid was cool. <laughs> he just rocks up in his buggy. <laughs> he just negotiated with it. I know. What could it go? What a legend. Let's see if it's in one piece then, eh? Where's the camera? I don't know where the nose is. Oh no! The camera! Has it gone? Yeah! 
No. Oh no. What colour was it? Orange. Ooh. Do you think, where's the nose as well? Unfortunately, I think that the nose of the rocket was forced off its apogee by the heavy tray lurching forward. This left the camera to free fall hundreds of metres below. Regrettably, it could be anywhere in this large grassy expanse, and finding it was absolutely impossible. So although the mission was largely successful, hooray, pat on the back, it actually worked. This one launch has taught me that I've still got a lot of things to be working on and improving. Starting with the positives, the altitude and speed achieved were beyond what I was actually expecting. Taking a look at the data from the onboard GPS, we can see that stage two reached an impressive 905 meters in altitude and a maximum velocity of 644 kilometers per hour. This rocket therefore went faster and higher than anything I've built before. We can see on a graph a second spike where stage two activated approximately four seconds into the flight. It does seem a little bit odd that the rocket seemed to massively decelerate about two seconds into the flight, but that is what the data says, and comparing the footage of this flight to videos of other high-speed rockets online, it is looking like this is correct. <laughs> To increase the maximum altitude, I could use a bigger motor such as this H motor, but at present I'm not certified to fly it. I get so many comments everywhere about making my own rocket fuel and why am I not doing this? Well, let me just say to you now that I'm afraid I'm not allowed to. As well as living in a country with terrible weather, I also live in a country that restricts um, the manufacturing of things like rocket fuel. Um, for good reason and I agree with the reasons, but um, yeah, basically, uh, according to this law, it's uh, completely illegal. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to be potentially doing things with hybrid rocket engines and jet engines in the future, so there's still all of those avenues to explore, don't worry, and of course, commercially available rocket engines, like the ones used in this. Uh, this video. Now on to improvements. The first big improvement that I will be making is to build a new launch rail in the future which will be a lot more beefy and strong than the one that was in this video. This is a stepping stone towards me building a great big launch ramp that can be orientated horizontally or vertically for rocket planes or um, high power ro just large rockets um, to take off from. I must say a massive thank you to all of my patrons at this point for helping me to uh, dream big. If you want to support the channel then you can with the link in the description. It's uh, yeah it, it really means a lot so thank you very much to everyone who helps me to build these projects. The biggest fail of this mission was of course that we lost the main onboard camera. To prevent this happening on a future flight I reprinted the nose and made sure it could be bolted down securely to the airframe tube holding the tray firmly in place. I'm going to be designing bulletproof camera mounts for high-speed rocket propelled projects in the future just to make sure that they're a bit more substantial than the one in this rocket. I'll also probably be doing away with the Runcam 2 4K as my main onboard camera in the future, instead opting for the smaller and lighter Runcam split along with an FPV transmitter. This will mean I can transmit live video to a monitor with a built-in DVR at a ground station which will record the feed locally. Moving on, one reason I make all of these videos is to encourage you to have a go at building experimental vehicles of your own and to maybe share your work online with the rest of us. If you want to start your own YouTube channel, it might be a good idea to get a head start through quality tutorials on many relevant subjects all in one place. Well now it's time for a quick ad from Skillshare who might help you learn some new skills that help you progress towards your goals in 2021. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and informative classes for creative and curious people. With it, you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in your learning. There are loads of classes that might appeal to you, such as this one on video editing, this logo design class, and maybe this one on Adobe Illustrator, which is a software I use quite a lot. Personally, I've been working my way through the Find Your Style class by Andy J. Pizza. I found value in the methodical, straightforward process of following five exercises to find your creative voice. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. On top of all of this is only $10 a month for an annual subscription 
so that's quite a deal. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So yeah, feel free to check that out and see if you like it. Thanks very much to Skillshare again for sponsoring this video and thank you to you for watching it. I'm going to go and build something new. Um, before you go and watch another video or watch one of my videos, then well, I hope you're watching one of my videos after this, uh, then uh, click like on your way out. And yeah, I will see you in about a month for something completely different. Ta-ra.